Whenever the weather warrants wearing a life jacket, we also make sure to carry a personal e like this. The Coast Guard will come out and they'll try to find whoever it is that fell overboard and they can home in on this locator beacon within feet and hopefully find you. Safety first at the Atlantic Cup as top crews verify their man overboard technology and ready up their spectacular class 40s on the eve of departure for the first leg from Charleston, South Carolina to New York City. High-end offshore racing is now coming back with a passion to America and it's no surprise that the very best, the double-handed sailors from the US and abroad, sought the face off at this nearly 900 mile challenge up the East Coast. The full onboard report on this edition of Top Story. Plunge into the action with NC Sports. We've got Dragon down there to lure Joe Harris down there. Uh, the two new boats are popped out pretty far. Going all right. About eight knots of boat speed right now. Fleets all, uh, all together, all on the same uh, sail combination, all going uh, about the same speed. The Class 40 is today's most advanced offshore yachts in its size, with a highly competitive worldwide circuit and top sailors from a traditionally strong European discipline, now also making waves in the USA. Medium to light wind conditions turned this first stretch to New York into a very tight affair. With constant sail changes, maneuvers and little or no sleep, the northbound fleet of seven faced the physical and mental demands of reduced crew sailing. This was a true ocean match race after 79 hours and 642 miles at sea, Bodacious Dream, co-skippered by Americans Rierick and Charles, crossed the finish line in New York just eight and a half minutes before Lecoq Cuisine with a veteran Frenchman, Eric Lecoq and Kiwi Conrad Coleman. The battle for third was just a half hour away with 40 degrees beating Icarus again by a matter of minutes and with the rest of the fleet packed together and into port in under four hours. This Atlantic Cup 2013 has taken the competition to the next level. The remaining 231 miles to Newport were no different, and with this America's Class 40 Grand Prix evermore at stake, leg two turned into yet another grueling challenge. The first step was finding Mark 1 at the Barnegat Inlet Lighthouse, unfortunately out of service. I'm totally out of breath because we just went from uh, for another sail change, which we've done about 10 up in the last few hours, and uh, it's like a little mini pit stop in uh, like a NASCAR race. Tonight we had a little bit of drama as we approached the Barnegat Inlet lights. First thing was the light was not lit. So I uh, had a little bit of trouble finding it in the dark. I think most of us were fumbling around in touch. Obviously to everybody else's advantage behind us, they could see us make the turn so they had to dial in for sure that the mark was there because I'm sure they were all uh, bewildered as well. We were supposed to be able to see a light off in five miles there was no light on it. Say we were all within uh, a mile or a mile and a half of each other. This is a nail biter. It's going to be all the way down to the finish and uh, I expect that the whole fleet's going to finish on top of one another this evening. A lot of it was hard work, really hard work, and uh, not sleeping. It's just having these boats so close together all the time, just really, you can't relax enough to fall asleep, so you might as well just stay on deck and keep working, and just constantly just trimming, keeping it going in the right direction, and uh, just trying to gain every little tiny advantage you possibly can, because you know all the boats are stuck, and they're, they're hooked up like uh, rubber bands. Block Island's key passage is split the fleet in two. On the inside option, Bodacious Dream kept a narrow lead. 
always marked by Le Coq Cuisine. The outside move paid off instead for Harris and Moulinier, finishing third on their Gryphon solo too. But again, this was once more an incredibly tight regatta, with the entire fleet into Newport within the 36th hour. The last Rhode Island stopover also included five inshore races with full crew of six. Led by Americans Posher and Fetch, with North Sales president Ken Reed on board, Icarus kept the better average dominated the series and also moved up to third place overall. We, we didn't do uh, as well as we would have liked, but um, you know, everybody's okay, we didn't break anything, so it's all good. In this last race, it was a great tussle with Icarus here all the way around the course. Uh, we kind of beat him to the first mark, but then we uh, screwed up around that, that mark rounding and uh, gave up some paces. And, and uh, fought back to get back in the second, hung on good, so worked out well for us. I think when they when they add up the points, we'll, we'll come out on top for the whole uh, the whole Atlantic Cup, which we're pretty happy about. So we had a good time. These guys, these guys sail this boat very very well, so it's pretty easy just to go along for the ride. To be quite honest, so uh, good fun, and this is what sailboat racing is supposed to be all about. Those race courses were fantastic. Race committee did a fantastic job. Uh, but it's just fun sailing with a bunch of young guys who are really into the sport like this and uh, go ripping around a race course. Doesn't get any better than that. Le Coq Cuisine did do enough in short to stay in second and with some good placements here around the boys in Narragansett Bay and thanks to the points advantage built offshore, Bodacious Dream ultimately took home the Atlantic Cup 2013. Passion, endurance and high-tech yachts, top-level offshore racing is now back in America. Plunge into the action with NC Sport.